How did you approach these calls? What was the preparation like for you before you'd ring that phone? Fantastic question. It's the first time I've been asked that question. Um, I had a pad by my you know, computer and phone, um, and I would write the name of the person that I was saying I was, uh, who I was impersonating. I would write their title. Um, I would have already done a ton of research on the company, um, what was going on with the company that day, uh, last week, the next week, stock price up, down, big conference coming up. Had they announced the deal? Did the CEO just resign? I would do hours of research, sometimes days of research, because sometimes we would only get one chance. You know, if I'm calling the COO of the firm and expecting him to believe that I'm the, you know, uh, uh, head of the office in Germany, uh, this is Gerhardt calling from his office in Frankfurt. We, we have the European Union regulators here and we need some information from the states, right? So I would be doing some accent, for t- you know, because all of these firms are global now, right? They have offices in Tokyo and Frankfurt and Paris and London and Dublin. And so you could do an Irish accent, you could do a German. And so all of a sudden, this executive in the States goes, oh my gosh, it's, it's uh, Ian blah, blah, and the, the head of the Dublin. Oh, hey, Ian. And he may know that person, probably does, but not well enough generally that he's going to call you out and say, wait a second, this isn't you. But again, I would do research on the voices, you know, Um, even back in the day, you know, now you can hear people do giving, you know, most executives have done some, some sort of speaking, right? But even you could call and just get their voicemail and, you know, you, and I'd listen, this is Gerhard. I'm not here right now, but you, you leave the message and I will call you back. And I would hear his accent. I go, oh. I can do that accent. Again, I'd practice it a little bit. And so now I had the voice down, even if someone recognized it slightly, you know. So there was a lot of research involved. And I did an event recently with Valerie Plame, um, who was um, the CIA agent who was outed by the Bush administration in 2003. In the event, I said to her, Valerie, you're the most famous CIA agent ever outed by their own government. She said, Robert, I'm the only CIA agent ever outed by their own government, which was really disturbing. Um, but she was very funny. She said two things, which I found amazing. One, uh, she agreed with me that women, uh, with my boss that hired me, that women made better spies. Uh, and the other thing was um, she said that the CIA agents also did a tremendous amount of research. Anytime an operative was sent out into the field, there was so much research, so much planning, because obviously you have an operative go out in the field and one thing goes wrong and the whole thing is blown, right? So when I was telling her about how much research we would do before we would even pick up the phone to make one phone call, it made a lot of sense to her. 